everybody, uh, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Look, uh, it's been a long day. I'm going to try to address an issue. That's one of those sensitive issues that normally means I'm probably going to get a lot of backlash, a lot of dislikes and complaints. And you know me, if you follow me long enough, you know that I don't care. I'm not saying I don't care about people or people's feelings. I don't care about people being upset about me speaking what I believe to be true, factual, and necessary. Uh, anybody that's followed me for any amount of time knows I don't go after people just for the sake of going after people. Uh, that's not how I get down. Uh, with that being said, uh, I'm going to do what I always do and let you know that we need your support. Uh, the link to support the work we do is in the description box. So look inside the description box. And if you believe in what I do, if you have an affinity uh, for what I've done and you followed me, uh, this is one of, time, one of those times where we really need you to show some love. On that note, look, somebody really was trying to provoke me. I, the first time they sent it, I ignored it. They sent it again. They sent me a video of, and I can't even think of the podcast, but it's supported by Fox. It's a sister on it. Uh, I think her name is Tammy or something like that. Um, I did recognize Cynthia G on there. Dr. Umar was on there. Uh, that was a transgender. And I always get confused which way you're supposed to name them. But they were presenting as a woman, but uh, born as a male. And they were transgender. And they were given, predominantly from what I can tell, uh, a great deal of leeway in their speaking. And, hey, you know, my thing is... Uh, one thing I'm not is a hate monger. I love all, love all my people, straight, get gay, trans, whatever. Uh, but I do have my opinions on the how certain things affect us as a collective, and I stand on that. Um, and I do it in love, and I have no problems with serving with, helping, and doing anything else with anybody that's truly about black progress and not using the black uh, label as a means of advancing some other agenda. I'm not for that, and I will call it when I see it. What stood out to me, and what I think is extremely important, is first and foremost, once again, Dr. Umar Johnson got ambushed. This time, he didn't get ambushed because he was attacked. Cynthia, uh, Cynthia G was on there, and I'm going to give you a brief history. If you don't know who Cynthia G, you should definitely know who Cynthia G is. Uh, she's been around for a while. A bunch of you guys came to me a few years ago and suggested that I uh, connect with her. I think we did like one thing. Uh, but during that time, she was coming hard in the paint from a black perspective. She was going hard in the paint against the establishment and she was making a bunch of major enemies. Uh, eventually, they got her YouTube yanked. Um, and she got banned in a couple of other places if i'm not mistaken and so upon her return she came back with a different angle this time her angle was basically it's the black man's fault and i'll i'll address the whole it's a black man fault because i have no qualms of going after one individual person unless i see but when people would come to me and talk about Kevin Samuels, who I openly said I disagreed with, uh, despite the fact that he spoke a lot of truth, uh, I disagreed with him because it was one-sided, first and foremost. Number two, uh, it was his delivery was completely off, and I don't believe that it's necessary. I believe if I can get a job done without, the, without hostile delivery, then it can be done. And hostile delivery does have a negative impact. I don't care what anybody says this is my area of expertise so I know what it does but anyway on the flip side of that everybody's upset with Kevin Samuels but for every Kevin Samuels there's like 20 women out there going hard in the paint just tearing down black men with no sort of accountability whatsoever I haven't done enough of following of Cynthia since her return I've just heard little clips and everything like that and I've looked for the positive in it and I haven't been able to find it so I just got off of it but that that's a, the reason I bring it up is because I observed her not because she was going at uh, Umar, Dr. Umar who is going to definitely stand up for men but also talk about what men need to do 
uh, the same way I do. And I believe I can speak on this because I don't think anybody has been harder on black men than me. Uh, I've been called, black men have came at me hard because they feel like I'm cutting too hard for black women. I'm just a man that believes that you protect women. I don't believe that you say they're right when they're wrong, though. I don't believe that you give them a pass, though. I just believe that's the way you handle a woman uh, as a reflection of the type of man you are. And I just believe that I can handle a woman and let her know her slip is hanging. Or she might not even be wearing a slip. And I can still do it in a way that is a reflection of who I am and gives her room to step into something rather than duck behind the corner and become defensive. It's about being effective and instead of offensive. But anyway, to the cusp of it is this person, Hope Giselle, I believe, is this person's name. And they are transgender, uh, presenting as a female, born as a male. And that alone will piss people off. Everybody's pissed about all kinds of stuff. Uh, some professor got fired like, this past week or this earlier this week because they called a student by their name instead of calling them they, which is the neutral uh, gender uh, assignment. So, I, you know, the fact that that stuff right, that shit right there is happening is absolutely absurd to me. Um, I, I, I think that you give someone an inch, they take a mile. I think that when you step back and say, hey, do your thing, be you, I think that's freedom. I think that's it, it uh, should be expected whether you agree with it or not I think that trying to manage or dictate what someone else does or how someone else feels is not your responsibility even though I think you have a right to sit up and say how you think it's going to play out but to fear monger to hate monger to sit up and put people in jeopardy of harm because you disagree with them I, I, I'm not with that I believe we've got to find a way to love one another, but I also got, got, have to be uh, able to sit up and say, I'm going to say what I have to say because it's done in love and I've always shown love. I have people very close to me and my family that I'm not going to out if, because I don't know where they're at in there saying that, that are very close to me and my family that are a part of that community. And I love them because they are a part of my family in ways. But look, with that being said, this person consistently referred to black men as y'all, meaning obviously 100% don't identify as a male, even though they were born as a male, came out and consistently referred to us when uh, referring to black women. Now, here, here's my thing. Cynthia G was there and wouldn't give Umar an inch on anything, but she consistently allowed this person to put themselves in a position of representation of black sisterhood. Here's my thing. If you want to identify as a female, do your thing. I have a problem when you start infringing upon the existence of black, uh, of, of black women in specific. Uh, it's across the board an issue, but I am unapologetically black and so I start with sweeping in front of my porch before I try to deal with what's going on in somebody else's yard so we're talking about blackness here so I'm talking about my sisters now here my me, my sisters and my brothers are at odds right now we can't seem to find common ground it's everybody pointing fingers and I've been talking about that for I don't know how long and I'm you know I'm trying to find a way to bridge bridge this gap so that we can come together because we need each other. I'm sorry. You can sit up and say what you want to if you think that that's going to be, that division is going to be a thing when they've constantly told you that they want you divided, that their best means of controlling you is to divide you and then you bite on everything that they're feeding you to stay divided then you are simply falling into it and you can be upset all you want, you can be mad all you want, you can put finger point all you want, there's enough culpability to go around for both sides. Now that I've got that out of the way, I have a problem with this person speaking as the representation of uh, black sisterhood because black sisterhood has had an experience that this person doesn't have the history to speak on. There's a uniqueness that comes with what this person is trying to align themselves with and be a part of 
that needs to be addressed. And I was shocked as much as hard as Cynthia is going in the paint about black men and where black women stand to let someone who has not been a part of that experience in, in truth and hi historically step in and speak on that because she becomes a part of the representation of the sisterhood. Um, this person becomes a part of the representation of the sisterhood. And I'm wondering how that looks in the beginning because the person is talking about that the black man needs to do this, the black man needs to do that, the black man needs to return to the home in the community and create black families. We need you to come back into the home. Now, here's the thing. If a black man is to come back to the community and that black man marries that person, they can't cr create a black family. So you're speaking on something that is phys phys uh, physiologically and biologically impossible as a possible reality and you're inserting yourself into a space where real black women are having to deal with the fact that they have children already by black men and those black men are not where they need to be or doing what they need to do and then you have another sister another part of the sisterhood that have children by black men and those black men are standing in and doing exactly what they're supposed to even in some instances where they're no longer in the home because it didn't work out but they're still standing up and manning up and then you've got other black sisters that's trying to find the right black man that they're are committed to that and then here comes a person that's talking about we and talking about coming in and talking about building a family and I think that number one is it subtracts from the validity and credibility of the conversation because if I'm a black man and you're coming at me and you're talking about building a family I'm looking at you and I'll give all the respect that you want to what you want to be and who you want to be but the reality of it is I can't build a family with you so your conversation is bouncing and black women should be concerned because this whole idea of being removed from simply being a black woman to being a cis black woman is problematic far beyond your issues with the black man. Now, again, a lot of people are going to be upset and I really don't care. I'm not attacking anybody's right to be anywhere, to be anything they want to be. What I'm saying is there are certain conversations you don't belong in. There are certain conversations that you need to defend. I can tell you this. Again, a gay man cannot come in and defend my position as a father and a husband. And my relationship with the black woman because they're not living that reality. They cannot uh, contest to what it takes to be in that role because they've chosen not to be in that role. And that's okay. That's your thing. Do your thing. I've given my opinion on what I think that's done. I think that there has been an ongoing campaign uh, to feminize the black male image. I think there's been an ongoing campaign to homosexualize black men. Uh, I believe that it's being done in a number of different ways. I've written on it. I've researched it. I've studied it. And I've given what you ha I have to give. And I've sort of moved on from that because it's, it, it's an idea. Number one is when you feminize the image, you make the image impotent. When you make the image impotent, then it isn't respected, not only by those on the outside, but those on the inside. If we continue to let it go the way it's going, the image of the black man will be a joke. The image of the black man will be nothing but something that's there. We are going to, as black men, have to reestablish ourselves, and we're going to have to do that by being where we're supposed to be, doing what we're supposed to do, standing how we're supposed to stand, and acting how we're supposed to act. And sometimes that's going to mean putting ourselves in harm's way to stand guard. Sometimes it's going to be meaning putting some things that we feel are important aside to make sure that the women and children in our lives are in the right place, in the right situation, in the right time. We're going to have to be protectors as much as we are providers. We're going to have to acknowledge that simply having the bag doesn't make us a high value man, that we're going to have to be protectors, providers, priests, prophets. We're going to have to be promoters of those under our covering. Why? Because they need to hear us speak highly of them and they need to see us represent them outside of the home so that they believe in who they are following and who they are leaning into and who they are trusting. That's a part of what we need to be. 
and and nobody that's a part of that community that isn't operating in that role has the right to speak on that but someone who's living it and who has tried to live it to the best of their ability and who stands on it and lives it as best as they possibly can and dares as many other men to do the same thing and teaches young boys to do it i have a right to speak on it because it's something that i'm living uh not perfectly but I guarantee you, I'm out there and I'm giving and I'm and, and, and I'm doing everything I can to stand in and do what I should do. I'm not unapproachable and I'm not beyond correction because I need people to hold me accountable. I need people to whisper in my ear. I need people to sit up and say, do you think that was the right thing to do? I need people to sit up and say, I know you're hurting right now, but don't do that. I need people to sit up and say, I know you're pissed off right now, don't do that. I need people to sit up and be in my ear, and I'm all for that. We need, as black men, to be doing that on a regular basis. Here's the thing. No person that's operating outside of that role has, has the ability or should be allowed to step in, and I'm going to call anybody that does it. I haven't seen anybody do it. I've seen some brothers who in the community who I respect, who are a part of the community, who go hard in the paint for blacks and actually don't make their sexual orientation a part of the equation or issue. That's somebody I've literally worked with. It took me a year to figure it out. And I went to my one of my other colleagues, I said, I think he, he said, yeah, man, he is. But that, but, but that to me is how you operate. No, I'm not walking around talking about my sexuality. You, you, you know because of my wife that obviously I'm heterosexual. Um, uh, at least you know I, 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 I have a thing for women, but I am heterosexual. Uh, only women uh, and that's who I am and I have no problem with working with anybody that's seriously about blackness but there are certain things you don't get to speak on you know you can speak from an opinion but you can't speak from a place of representation now you can speak from a place of opinion you can speak from a distance but you don't get to say we because you're not in that space you're not in that role and I think that we have to defend spaces like that. So when I see somebody that can't be a part of building a family, speaking as if they can, and then people who are part of that group not addressing it, it's it's concerning. So is that where we're leading? Are we leaving? Are we are we headed to a place where transgender women, people born male? who identify as female and move and carry themselves as such are now going to be the spokespeople for our sisters. Because what our sisters have endured, the experience that our sisters have gone through is a very unique experience. And it's a part of their identity. It's a part of their makeup. It's a part of how they are and where they are and what they're going through. And I think only someone who's had that experience gets to speak on it. Before you could talk about a man having kids and leaving his kids, you need to have had a ki have had kids and at least know what it's like to have them and have ha had to take care of them. Even if you've never had, if your if your man is still with you, you need to be able to say, "I know what it takes to raise a kid, and I know how important my husband is in this role, so I can speak on this because I know." But to have someone who can't talk on that experience be the spokesperson for that experience, I I, I don't think it's a good look for sisters. Now, sisters, you're going to hear this. Tell me if I'm wrong. Again, I can be corrected, but tell me if I'm wrong. Now, brothers, tell me, if, do you want a man who is not operating as a heterosexual man speaking on heterosexual male issues? Or am I just off on this and it's just a me thing? And I don't think it's a me thing because the person who sent it to me was like, hey, man, what do you think about this? Which is another way of saying you see this bullshit. So that's my thing so tell me it, uh, I, I, I want you to weigh in on this I'm about to get out going uh, got, a, got another meeting today uh, but I'm about to get out and go in and on that note look don't forget if you haven't blessed us bless us if you believe in what we're doing I don't probably pissed everybody off now though nobody's gonna want to give but please support the work we're doing we've been doing this for a long time and uh, I've been telling you for late for a while now we need your support and support is pretty much uh, Neil, I mean, I don't think we got anything. I'm not going to talk on it. Look, we need your support. On that note, I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to get in and do what I got to do. 
uh, my family needs me to show up. So I'm about to do what I do for my business. But I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable day. Thanks once again for allowing me to take up a little bit of your time. On that note, I'm out of here. Peace.